Our world is changing rapidly, oftentimes not for the better. On any particular day, a random cascade of events could evict any one of us from our homes. The number of people who suffer this catastrophe is steadily rising, and the answers to this problem don't come easily. There's no simple solution to the shared problem we have with homelessness or resolving the financial inequities that exist in one of the richest societies ever known to humankind. It's not for lack of trying. In our own community, there are thousands of people providing social services and resources. Look at this map of our local asset. Blue stars represent the city and county agencies. Purple hands represent faith community congregations who also provide meals, clothing, and shelter. Red circles show us the nonprofit service locations. Yellow hearts are businesses who donate to those nonprofits. Why have all these well intended efforts failed to reduce the accelerating cascade of social problems? We may have become so distant from each other that we have difficulty defining the problems as well as the needed solutions. Some of the most important people have been excluded from the conversation. The homeless people themselves and the people who work directly with them on a regular basis. Today we will ask them some questions about their lives and then we will ask you to share your answers to the same questions. Our shared answers may provide us some new insight into how we can work together to solve what appears to be an unsolvable social tragedy. Uh, the total time that I have been unhoused, that probably totals up to five years. And I got a job even while I was homeless. I kept working and I was trying really hard not to look homeless because that's not good to do on the job. So it took, um, it took me a long time in the morning to get ready to just make sure that I look like a quote unquote normal person. Um, I was in transitional housing for uh, the last year or two and now I have permanent housing um, and that just happened uh, this month. Within It happened in December and this is January, so in the last 30 days it, it happened. So, and I've been on wait, I've been on waiting lists, multiple waiting lists, and finally my name came up and it got drawn, so, so now I'm good. We got laid off in 2008. And then it just the shit hit the fan because like I was pregnant. We ended up doing our W-2s wrong. We ended up owing state taxes. I mean, it was just like the worst year ever. Like we didn't know what to do. We were in this like little small town and everybody in the town was slammed when they laid everybody off at the Superior Lumber. It was horrible. Like millwrights that had worked there their whole lives just got screwed, screwed by the timber industry. I Struggling in and out of homelessness since I was 22 years old. I'm 45 now. I got Section 8 voucher fulfilled when I was 41. And um, it's actually the first time in a really long time that I've had solid place to live. And I haven't had to worry about everything falling apart. So I'm not as homeless as a lot of people. I do have a place to go. I decided to get a motorhome because rent was really high and 
it just seemed like a better option for me. Then I wouldn't get evicted if I wasn't working full time or I always had a place to go basically. In the 90s it seemed like I could work a minimum wage job and live a lot better than I can now. And I make the same amount of money, but everything's gotten more expensive. I don't get a co uh, cost of living raise basically. I'm not very picky about where I sleep. I can sleep anywhere is one thing. But uh, how I'm affected by it, I got robbed of being a dad. But maybe I can be a grandpa. It's been about 32 years of uh, being, you know, getting out of jail and needing to get a truck or a car and a, and a house and an apartment and a job and being, you know, on parole or probation for the driving on suspended. Since 14, I hit the streets on my own, so I've been on the streets before that. And then, you know, about 23. In 26, I hit, hurt my shoulder, and it's been this one, you know, it's like homeless ever since. The shoulder thing, it's been really tough. And this guy gave me a chance to not be on the streets and be a farmer. When I was a kid, um, I was raised very poor. So my grandmother would take me to the, a mission, which it wasn't the mission from here, it was a mission down south, and we would serve people on Thanksgiving and to give, and that was just the way I was raised is that if you have something to give, then your life is better because you're giving it and other people around you, life is better too. That's win-win. So why wouldn't you? And I started volunteering with the Occupy encampment in October of 2011. A lot of people didn't have any insurance. And they didn't have any way to see any doctors. So they were struggling with things that were really easily treatable. Yeah, you have to have friends uh, to help buoy you up because it can get incredibly depressing and very, very tiring. Um, you're constantly being moved and being told you can't stay here. And, and even if they weren't visible places, like if they were off the beaten path, uh, somehow they would find out and, you know, come after us. Yeah. And I, and I say us because I don't remember ever camping out alone. Um, single woman, not a good idea. Um, being homeless, one develops um, hyper-awareness. You have to be aware what's behind you, what's on the side of you, and what's in front of you. So your head's on a swivel. Um, danger could present itself at any time. It is predator mentality out there. Not only you predator preyed upon a point with your counterparts, with your other houseless community, you're preyed upon by people who are housed who feel like you're a target for whatever reason. So, I mean, it's really important to have nice, tight camaraderie. Right? And I always tell my daughter, who's just beautiful, you must always travel with someone. I mean, I, I totally believe that with all my friends, actually, even though I'm sheltered, Still, I'm like, we have to stay together because someone can snap you up any minute. You know, we totally stand together like tribes. We're like, you know, you could have all the security you think that you need and one day it could be gone. I mean, you could suffer from a natural disaster and then what happens? You know, and the government don't care about you. That's obvious. So it's best that we just stand together and stick out for each other. Like I'll go downtown a lot of times and just spend time talking to people. And a lot of the guys, I mean, that, some of the guys don't talk to people for days. Unless something says some, you know, passing by or sometime. There's a lot of times people don't interact with people. And that, to me, is not good for humans, you know, just go days and not talk to anybody. If I see people that they have lost their belongings over and over again because they, they are solitary and they're in one camp and they go off to go to the bathroom and they come back and their stuff has been sorted through. Either the cops have taken it away or other house people or just thieves have taken their stuff. So you need to kind of alternate. It's just, it's just like camping except pretend that there are monsters around you all the time. And for people that have medical issues, um, a lot of their medication has a lot of street cred. So once 
the word gets out that you have epilepsy or something like that, that means that you have medication and you can fall prey to uh, predators, predatory behavior. It's also really good because a lot of um, business owners around here are very predatory as well. And it's nice to keep an eye out, um, have somebody When I got, found myself getting extremely angry about my situation, whatever it might be at the time or just the overall situation, I had to come down from that and just cope instead of, uh, you know, running with my anger. And mostly I was mad at myself and I turned that inwards and, I, in, and it, became, it became depression and uh, uh, fear. Uh, a lot of people get beaten down when they're out there. Um, they have, they develop mental illnesses. Uh, they develop addictions if they didn't already have either one of those. Um, and so they become a lot easier to prey upon. It's despair and you're like nobody gives a fuck and then that's when you start turning in inward to this like you know, you can't deal with your own thoughts, so you turn to alcohol or drug addiction, and then the ball just gets bigger and bigger. And then suddenly, like, it's us against them mentality. And I'm telling you, the mental health issues on the street, these people see demons, okay? It's like the us against them mentality. If They're constantly being chastised. They're constantly being, you know, told they're pieces of shit. And you're out on the street you can't even get enough sleep to get grounding, to get credibility, to get sanity. And you you start to see things. I was screaming hideous murder things that anybody maybe heard from me, being homeless, was actually coping with the stresses of life and wanting to do it in an empty room where no one hears it. Because then I just put it in that box with not doing it towards the world or anybody. And then it's like a nested piece of energy. And you know, I can look at myself in the mirror. That's the worst thing about poverty. Poverty will try and make you go outside your character. And you'll have all the easy roads along the way and not the one that's gonna save your face from the mirror. And I save my, sa my face. When I meet my children, I'll be able to look them square in the eye. And though I tried the whole, the whole darn time. Two weeks is about all that it takes. And then you see people get this wild look in their eye, um, almost like a, a feral look. They're looking around because they're used to the assault or they're used to not being welcome in the society. Um, we don't have enough mental health counselors. Um, we certainly don't have enough physical spaces that we have set aside for people to recover from the grief of poverty. And it destroys people. It kind of guts them from the inside out. As many horrors as we see, there are incredible things that happen to people that they just turn their lives around and we get to see it. What an honor. For someone just starting out, it's pretty bewildering. You don't you don't even know where to start. It's because you're thinking of so many things. You know, where am I going to sleep? Where am I going to get a sleeping bag to sleep in? Where am I going to get food? Where am I going to get some clean clothes? Where am I going to get a shower? It's just all these things that people take for granted when they're housed. In hours, they don't get sleep. They don't have a place to get warm, they have a hard time getting a shower, and life just becomes harder and harder and harder and more and more and more unbearable. 
And then you do become prey to victim. Be, you become a victim to prey because um, your body starts to break down. And then what I would call spiritual attacks start to happen. But I don't know. I, I would like to try to find some place people could park it just at night. But it's hard finding a business owner to, you know, let a piece of property go. Not let it go, but just let people use it, even if it's for sale. They don't want to let you use it. Even a lot of the churches I see don't help that could. And a lot of these big churches have plenty of property. It was, for me, it was different because uh, I was always on probation or parole, and that gives a whole bunch of avenues that people don't understand. It's not a timeout because you were a bad person. It's supposed to be a correctional space to make you uh, 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 contributing to your environment. Now, resources, I get out, I, I get a halfway house. I go back to work, I start labor ready, temporary jobs is the most fluent thing in my in my book because it gets me to work today, labor ready today, pay today. Yeah, there's years I did labor ready just to be able to look for work. There's a lot of people in construction that will hire day laborers and then hire them permanent. I got over here at Goshen Forest Products permanent for a labor ready job. While it's so expensive to be unhoused. Uh, a lot of people are out there panhandling to get a uh, motel or um, I have one person I'm thinking of, particularly she's a senior citizen and she does have income and she, she has had income that was enough to pay for housing before but um, she couldn't fix up her house so she lost her housing and she's been living in a motel since and she's running out of money. so. She, last time I talked to her, she was figuring out how many, excuse me, she was figuring out how many months before she would be living on the street. Is it hard? Yeah. How do people do it? I don't know. I just don't know how they do it. They never cease to amaze me. People are miraculous but I know once in a while they kind of run out of miracles I think one of the reasons that I continue to work with homeless people is part of it's out of love, you know, because I know what it's like to be in this situation. And I I wouldn't want anyone to be in, in that situation. When I was out there, um, people gifted me. They didn't know me. Um, and it was such a good feeling. It was like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Because you don't owe me anything. You don't know me. But people did that for me, so this way I can pay it forward, because that was done for me. I want to make a, a learning farm for anybody that's homeless with an attitude to get out of being homeless. They could come and, you know, it'd be like a, you know, you go on the weekends, you go camping at the lake or whatever, right? I will get a spot where I, I have... You know, it's like uh, uh, when I was going to LCC, I helped uh, them uh, do some EPA stuff because they had re at their learning garden. Uh, Baco came in and I did all the handwork to it for about two seasons. And it's a learning garden. And since we have such a huge need for health care in this community, because health care is a human right, but the United States hasn't recognized that yet, um, I'm going to just keep going until we get universal health care because it's needed. I would love to be better about finding more resources. There's got to be more out there. There's got to be more. I, I, this is the land of abundance. There's, there, we can fix this. I will go back to work when I know that I have my ducks in a row. 
And so that's the crossroads I'm at right now. Um, I'm working um, at a radio station which, I, as a volunteer, which I find really rewarding. And it's kind of good job training for when I go back out there and start working again. And then I work on uh, several boards in the local community. And that also helps me out, too, because I'm making connections with people and um, getting better, getting more experienced at you know, talking in a professional setting um, and being responsible and reliable, um, somebody that you can count on. And those are those are things that that were were true about me before. But then when I became unhoused, that started slipping. I feel like I'm stagnant. I feel like I'm really stuck because I'm grateful for my housing, but our rent here is twelve sixty four a month, and yeah. And this is low income housing. My 11 year old has ADHD and he's really hard to mainstream and has struggled since kindergarten, but the schools didn't want to deal with him. And they kept calling me. I was cleaning motel rooms and bicycling from Springfield to Eugene every day. And they kept calling me, oh, Michael's acting up. He was five years old in a classroom full of boys and the teacher just didn't like him. And she just didn't like the fact that we lived in an RV. I mean, straight up, we got straight discriminated on. I could not freaking work. I mean, why is it hard to put out a porta potty or something so people can use it? And I mean, I don't know. Understand the easy problems, fixes like that, like garbage laying around and things. Put trash cans out. People will use them if they're out. One of the things is trying to get people who can work to work, and that would bring our economy up. But there are those people who can't actually hold a job or aren't mentally stable or this or that and can't, you know, contribute to society. And what do you do with those people? Through it. You know, most Americans haven't suffered enough. They're too, oh, I need my favorite thing. I don't care about nothing but my favorite thing. I need more doctors. I can always use more doctors. I feel like we are really good at getting physical resources like bandages and um, just office paper and stuff like that. I am so good at begging. I am the best panhandler ever but I need to be good at getting the the money into because things just cost money medicine is expensive even when you do it the way we do it and we don't charge insurance we charge nothing it's free care because health care is a human right we deserve to be treated well and you only make a change if you show people what it looks like so that's what we're doing I could talk about it calmly now, you know, without crying or getting really upset because um, it's it's in the past and I'm going to leave it there. But also the lessons that I learned from there, they're still with me um, and I can still um, implement them. I can still get some good out of them. There's so many people just losing their homes or going, losing their jobs or going homeless because they get sick. And that, to me, is just totally wrong. You, should, you just sit down and talk to somebody, and you actually get to know somebody, then it, it's a different dynamic in the way that you see somebody, you know, rather than it's a stranger. And you get to know people. Also, if you're, you know, and in, in they're in their neighborhood, if you get to know the people, then they're like your neighbors. You get to know your neighbors, everybody goes and introduces themselves. But if there's a homeless guy on the street, nobody goes out and introduces themselves like he's your neighbor. And that's more like needs to happen. Even if people with houses would go, you know, one night live on the street, find a place to lay down, you know, go find a place that's quiet, go find a place that nobody's gonna kick you out of, and then see how hard it is to actually be homeless. And All this stuff with the new groups of humans on the planet are gonna be more centered with empathy and their compassion. We're being raised with the understanding of a world and not my street, my, my town, my city, our state, our country. It's our world. I would love to see poor people have a union and get together 
because there are so many more people in poverty than there are of the wealthy and dividing people is how we get crippled. I would love for people to, instead of saying to themselves, you know, I'm weak if I reach out for help, um, recognizing that they're strong by reaching out, that would be, oh, that would be huge. The solution to poverty is not out there in the hands of other people. It begins in here with their willingness to participate in conversations that go beyond superficial judgments, beyond charity, to solidarity with the people who have been displaced from home, family, and community. Displaced people are the authorities from whom we will learn the most. In order to get good answers, we need good, powerful questions that steer us away from what we think we already know and open our imagination to new possibilities. That is why the final pages of your notebook contain a toolbox of powerful questions. The easiest way for you to create the opportunity for you to hear someone's story is to volunteer a few hours of your time with an organization that is directly serving the needs of displaced people with food, clothing, or shelter. Within a very short time, it will quickly and easily change your worldview as it did for me. Look for volunteer opportunities on the internet, from your local government, United Way, or your faith community. I challenge you to think about who is your neighbor and what it is that we can do together as neighbors that none of us can do alone. Thank you for your attention.